Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be testing the new Rosa Gallery colors. Okay, today we're going to be testing the new Rosa Gallery colors that they sent me. They sent me 10 new colors plus 5 extra that I picked out or I actually left it up to them to pick out for me. So I I love Rosa Gallery. I they're a company made out of Ukraine and I have many many palettes. I think I have every palette they've created and I've even ordered just ordered this. This just came in yesterday and it is a 12 classic set and it just has a warm and a cool yellow, warm and a cool red, a uh, warm and a cool green, warm and a cool blue, yellow ochre, umber, sepia, and neutral black. This has just your basic colors. It is wonderful for plein air painting. But I have the romantic palette and the botanical palette and the monopigmented palette and the travel palette and the on and on and on. I think I think I have one called the modern palette. So I have a lot of Rosa Gallery paints. I love them. They are so saturated. They lift like a dream. Um, right now I just have these setting. These are the new colors. I've already, um, I don't know if I can get my camera over there to show you. I've got the wrappers already taken off and stuck up there in order. And I'm going to swatch these colors in pretty much rainbow order. And I'll tell you whether they're the new color or not. I will link their card in the description below so you can go up and see their color chart of all their colors on the Rosa website. Rosa is pretty easy to get in sets on Amazon. Not so much individual colors on Amazon. You can get Rosa watercolors on Jackson's individually, but you know, they sell out. So we'll see. I just went on there to try to get some titanium white and I couldn't get it. So um, I take titanium white from other sets. So here I've got, I'll read them off to you. Well, we'll go one by one and we'll just swatch them. I've got them sitting in this, I don't have an extra palette, so I've got them sitting in this old um, Koi, Secure Koi metallic palette that, that I can't fit them over here, but these are kind of crap paint so I gotta figure out what to do with it. Pop them out and squeeze some more colors in it because it's a great palette. Um, but other than that the paints are awful. So first one we'll start off with and I'm gonna wet the page and I'm using my painter's color diary for this and I'm gonna wet the block. This is Azo Yellow EY 151. This is new to Rosa Gallery, but not new to the painting community. I mean, there are other brands. So I'm going to let that, I got a little bit too much water. I am crazy about these paints. Not only are they affordable, but look how, look how they lift. They just lift like a dream. Let's make sure you can see this. They flow like, mm, no tomorrow. That's beautiful, beautiful. PY 151. Gorgeous. Okay, and that's a new color. 
So this next one is Golden Ochre, and it is kind of like a yellow ochre, but I don't know, it just has a quality to it. It's a little bit more earthy. I think it's beautiful. semi-transparent, although I think it's pretty, I can see some opaqueness, but oh my gosh, I just think these paints are the jam or the bee's knees. The next color we have is cadmium orange medium. Now, Rosa uses cadmiums, so, you know, you might want to take care in using the cadmiums with your hands and, you know, make sure you wash your hands and stuff after using them. So, now I'm not pre-wetting these palettes or these pans at all. Look at it. It just goes. It just has really wonderful flow. This is, it says it's transparent, but I am seeing a little bit of opaqueness across the line. Maybe it is Maybe that means opaque. It's just got a blue box. We'll test that out because I am seeing some opaqueness across that line. This next color, oh my gosh. I am in love with. This is Pyro Red. PR254. I've got Pyro Red. I just bought some new ones to do a comparison because I don't know how other brands can beat this Pyro Red. PR254. It says it's semi transparent. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, it is just, it is very, very, just a very good red. Fire engine, fire engine red. Let's see if I hold it at an angle and let it go. That's beautiful. PR254. And that cadmium was PY35. Or was it PY? Yeah, PY35. The next one we have is Cadmium Red Deep. And I maybe should have switched these around, but I didn't. Because this one is a little bit warmer. And I'm going straight from the pan. I'm telling you, you just get a, a load of paint. So, if you want to go lighter with this, but I'm giving you full on saturation here. Here's Cadmium Red Deep. PR108. This is a granulating color. I probably got a little bit too much paint on my brush. PR108. Put some 
put a little bit of water down in there so you can see the granulation. It's it's really beautiful. It's like tomato. Mm. Okay, this, and these are new colors that they have to their line. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and there's 10 of them. That granulation in that cadmium red is beautiful. Here's carbon red. It's a granulating color too. It is PB, it's a mixture though. It is PB36, PR254, so it has some pyro red in it, and PBK7. It is gorgeous. I have played with these colors a little bit so I could know a little bit about them before I did a review. They don't disappoint. Okay, so here's carbon red. It says it's granulating. It's semi-transparent. It is absolutely beautiful. It's like a maroon. And the black settles into the bottom. Let me add a little bit of water. So you can see that black pigment. And this is going to cause me grief later on if I don't Take a thirsty brush and get that pool up on that cadmium red. That granulates beautifully though, that cadmium red. Oh, can you see that on that carbon red? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So pretty. All right, so this next one is Caput Mortem. Another gorgeous earthy color as well. And I just recently fell in love with Caput Mortem. And I bought several mixed media supplies. If anybody's interested in some extra footage, on like matching watercolors to a colored pencil then let me know because I'll be putting that those extra videos on my members channel you can go check it out and see what it's about here's Caput Mortem it's a deep earthy red brown Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So pretty. It's almost violet, like an earthy violet. Let me see if I can pull it out here so you can see those violet tones in there. It's gorgeous. It's PR 101. You know, so simple. It's so beautiful. Now this next one is chromium oxide. So pretty. Such a beautiful green. I keep looking up at my um, camera to make sure I'm in frame. Sometimes I don't find that until after I'm done shooting and then I think oh my gosh I went out of frame
I'm learning how to do all this video stuff. It's it's challenging. Okay, this is chromium oxide. It is gorgeous. It's a very nice green. Granulating PG seventeen. Opaque. Okay, so if I took some pigment off and went down here, I can get a lot of variation of color. I love that about this color. You know, you can go full on opaque and get a nice green, you know, almost a dark value, and then, you know, water it down and get almost pastel. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay, and the next one, and these are new colors. The next one is Cobalt Green Medium. It is beautiful as well. I do love my greens. And you can take these and mix them. Mix it with a little yellow and get a brighter green. A little golden ochre and, you know, that mixes wonderfully. Here's Cobalt Green Deep. Mmm. Very pretty. PG-26. This chromium oxide was PG-17. This is granulating. And then, if you take it out, sorry if I keep clicking that water jug. Take it out and you get a really nice light color too. These colors almost remind me of like this light chromium oxide reminds me of kind of like rare green earth and this reminds me of like terra verde. They're just very pretty. Very, very pretty. And then this this color, I'm telling you, this is an ultramarine. This is PB29, but it's called ultramarine spectral. It doesn't say that it has any fluorescence or anything. It says it's granulating, semi-opaque. This color is out of this world. Look how brilliant that is. That is the most brilliant ultramarine I have ever seen. I think, and I don't know this, but I can already see the granulation. That is just gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous. You might think I'm silly. Getting this excited over watercolors. This color palette is just amazing. Okay, and this next one. And Danthrene Blue. And we all know what an Danthrene Blue looks like. It's, you know, kind of a darker blue, a little bit cooler, not wetting the pan. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I like to take a minute and take my brush away so you can see how it moves. I think that these Rosa Gallery, you know, one thing I like about paint, watercolors, is watching them move. 
you know, seeing the color when you put it down, the vibrancy, um, how's it going to mix down. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Oh, I got out of the lines. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blue. Let me take this ultramarine and pull it out a little bit so you can see the lightness. I didn't do that up here, but you can kind of see. Um, I could have done a better job with this cadmium red. This pyrrole red does have a nice tone. Mm. Isn't that in Dantrain Blue pretty? That's PB60. Okay, here's another PB60. This one is called in Dantrain Gray. Make sure I'm recording. This is a new color. I don't believe in Dandrine Blue is a new color, but I'm not for sure. I'm going to put that link in the description below. And I have swatched all these out on Arches paper. So if you want to see that footage, you know, I'll put that in my members group two so you can see that because sometimes colors just shine on archers arches it's my favorite paper this is in dandrine gray oh my gosh it's so pretty it's like a Payne's gray but that's the fabulous dark in this set mm. It is beautiful, and it could, you could use this as an indigo. It's nice and dark with the blue. You could use it as a Payne's gray. It's a beautiful color. Okay, now here's the indigo. Now they've had indigo in their set. This is not a new color. Here's indigo. Rosa Gallery's Indigo. It's very similar. It's a mixture of PB15 colon 1, PB19, and PBK7. Very similar. It's a beautiful indigo. I went off of the outside the lines there. Darn it. I wanted to stay good. I wanted to stay in the lines. That's a pretty color. They're very similar. The endanthrine gray is supposedly granulating and the indigo supposedly is not. However, we'll just have to wait and see how they dry down. Which brings me to a different point. When they dry down, I think they're almost just as saturated a little bit too much water on there. I'm going to have to lift it or it's going to cauliflower. And I don't want that. When they do dry down, their saturation pretty much stays the same. I don't think that they portray a flat color. I think they have a lot of depth and life to them and saturation. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried Rosa Gallery? I got this little set for 20 bucks off of Amazon. So, and it has every color you'll need to mix and do all kinds of paintings. Maybe I'll do that for a future video is what kind of mixes can you get out of this little 12 set?
Um, but, you know, they are really, really good. And I think this is my third little 12 set I've bought. So I can keep one in the house, one on in my car, you know, one out in the shop, you know, out in my studio, which I call the shop. So you can't beat that. You can't beat that price. Not at this these qualities of paint. I'm really excited. I haven't found a way to get their watercolor brushes, but I've been seeing them all over TikTok and um, YouTube shorts, Facebook, and they have also they have watercolor sketchbooks. They was very kind in sending me these paints to try out and do a review on. Man, if they want me to be a U.S. ambassador, I certainly would. This is called Azure Blue, and it is PG-26, PG, PB-15-3, and PBK-7. This is gorgeous. It's a little bit heavier pigment. It's like a dark teal. Like you're looking into the ocean. It reminds me of the it reminds me of the waters in Hawaii when I went. It's that color. I tell you, if you've never experienced Hawaii and the waters there, they are incredible. It's been many years since I've been, but isn't that pretty? Now I'm going to do a little bit more on this one side. So you can see the value change. There you go. You can get real, real dark with it. And then go to a lighter value. Love them. Now the last color I have, I this was in the romantic set, I believe. It's warm gray, and it's PR254, PBK7, and PW6. And I asked them for this color because I wanted to keep it in another set. I really, really enjoy this to put sky colors in. It has, like, shadows of clouds. It has like a pink undertone, probably from the 254. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Hmm. That's beautiful. And it's almost a mushroom color, too. I bet you could use these for mushrooms. I never thought about that. Okay, so let's do a couple mixes and see what we can come up with. Um, a lot of these I would do as standalone colors, with the exception of, um, you know, they're all so beautiful. I could do them as standalone colors, but let's try to do. Um, a little bit of mixes with our typical colors. Let's go Azo Yellow and Ultramarine. We'll go Azo Yellow. And this Ultramarine Spectral. And we do get the typical 
green. We'll put that under ultramarine. Now I metered it down, but if I got a bigger concentration of azo yellow and then a bigger concentration less water, I'm tapping my brush less water and then I could get a darker that's a pretty green that's a pretty green right there and then even if I added more as a yellow to it I hope you can see that. I could get a lighter, springier green. It's pretty. And then if I added even more, I'm trying to get that. Let's try to add just a teeny tiny bit of cadmium orange. Cadmium is real strong, so you got to be careful. And then you could get like a sap green. Oh my gosh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. And you could do that just until you get the green you wanted. But that's a pretty sappish green. And let's look at um, making a violet. Let's go ultramarine spectral. Get a good concentration here. And pyro red. Now this pyro red I think is quite strong. But yes, that makes a beautiful purple. Beautiful purple. And let's add a little bit more blue to it. I got some blue over here. And we could make it even more more purple. You could go either way. More maroon or more purple. Okay, we've got green mixes. We've got purple mixes. Now let's go and see if we can get, we have a cadmium orange, but let's, let's do a mix of like pyro red and golden ochre. And that should give us, there's pyro red. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. That is the prettiest pyro red I've ever come across. Okay, so here's golden ochre. Let's mix that. I'm going to need a little bit more. That pyro red is strong. Here's golden ochre. Oh, wow. That makes a very, very pretty skin tone. Or peach. I would call that peach. Let's add a little bit more golden ochre. That 
take some pigment off. And that is a really, really pretty skin tone. And then, okay, so if you added a little bit of blue, so, or the, let's just take this little bit of violet over here and mix it in. That'll neutralize it a little bit. Oh, wow. That's a really pretty skin tone. Like a Caucasian skin tone. And then you could take some Maybe a little bit of this Caput Mortem. That's like an earthy violet. Hmm. That's a pretty one. Yeah. Now, if you came across a person that had a little bit, you know, you can tell kind of what your skin tone is, cool or warm, by the veins that you see in your, in your wrist. So if they look more green, then you could add a little bit of green. I'm going to go with this. Chromium Oxide. Oops. That. And here's another one. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful skin tone. That's a darker skin tone. And you know, to, to get darker and darker, you just have to add its complement. So, get a little bit more of this green. A little bit more green. And then a little bit more pyro red. Oh, that was too much. A little bit more green. I'm adding its opposite. There we go. And then, then you have an even darker skin tone. Mmm. That's pretty. That is gorgeous. Okay, so what else? You could take this indigo or um, indanthrin gray. Let's try this indanthrin blue. And azo yellow. I love that azo yellow. It is just almost the perfect, not too cool, not too warm. There's another good green. And then sometimes an indigo makes a good green as well. Mixed with, mixed with yellow. And it'll give you a darker green. We're getting a little samey. My point is, 
Let's see what this could put more than. I'll mix it right on top of that. And I'm going to add Azo Yellow to that. Let's see what we get. Ooh. Now that's pretty. I say start playing. Mmm, that's, that's like a goldish khaki color. That is beautiful. Let's add a little bit more Kaput Mortem to that. And we'll get a pretty brown. Just know your color wheel, you know, because I'm looking at this Kaput Mortem and it leans a lot towards violet. So when I add yellow, that's its opposite. And it's going to neutralize. When I look at red, that's opposite and the color wheel is green. So it's going to neutralize and turn brown. So it's easy to mix a brown. It's easy to mix a skin tone. Let's see what the orange and the blue should give us. So this ultramarine spectral And the cadmium orange. That's real pretty. That's almost a skin tone in itself. Mmm. Very, very interesting mixes. Um, let's put a little bit more blue to it and it should gray out okay let's get this off and let's see if we can make a black let's do let's start with our darkest let's start with in Indenthrine Gray. That's pretty dark, but it still leans on the blue. I don't have a brown, so maybe if I get a little bit of this um, should I go cadmium red or cadmium orange? Let's go cadmium orange first. That's giving me a brown or gray. That's pretty black right there. Yep, this does everything I need it to do. It's very nice, and even if I would want to take that warm gray, I always love to play with mixes. Take that warm gray, and let's say mix it with some... Let's try this golden ochre. You can just try. What's the worst that can happen? Oh, that's kind of pretty. It's kind of, it is kind of like a beige. That's really pretty. But it's, it's kind of like a Titan buff.
but it's beautiful. Mmm, that's a pretty beige. Mmm. I love that. I actually really, really love that. There's all kinds of things you can do, and you're never going to find out what can happen if you don't try things. So if you take that black and mix it with warm gray, now if I had some titanium white, I might do that, but this is the only color that has white in it. So I'm taking that black, mixing it with tight or warm gray, and then taking some golden ochre. That is pretty. Here's here's another swatch. That's a little bit cooler, but a darker value. Very pretty. Gray, golden ochre. Yeah, I love that. I love that beige. So, what do you think of these paints? I may be biased. I love Rosa Gallery paints. Like I said, I have all the sets, I've bought them all. And I'm using them as my primary paint nowadays. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions about it. I'm going to try to find out some more information. Anything else I'll find, I'll put links in the description below. I'll put links to this. I'll put links um, to where you can get their new colors at. I think they're all available at Jackson's either in these little curettes, they call them curettes, or, or full pans, and tubes. So, that's the only place I know that they're um, available. If you're interested in seeing the swatches I did on Arches paper, they really shine on Arches paper. So, head over to my membership groups. There's three levels, and the first level is just, you know, shout out your name, recognition, support me as a YouTuber. I'm trying to get my channel to the point to where it can support me, and buy more watercolors, keep me painting, you know, pay for everything that I need to, and you know, if you subscribe to this channel, it really helps. All this is free, but over there, there's three tiers. There's, I think it's the bronze, silver, bronze, and gold. And I will put this under the gold membership. And the silver membership is a shout out. Or is that the bronze? Um, I'll link it in the description below and you can go um, take a look. It, it's just a minimal cost and it shout out, you know, I recognize you, I call you out by name, I thank you for supporting my channel. And then the next level up is, you know, personal communication with me. You know, we'll connect on another. Uh, other platforms and you know maybe a discord server and then the gold level is extra videos and also some free stuff so and then I will you know that's kind of cool you know and I'll show you that in another video so stay connected stay well and I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Go buy Rosa. Go down there and buy Rosa Gallery. If you want to see other videos of my Rosa Gallery, 
um, click the description or the end cards or the cards up there. So talk to you later. Bye.